Hello everyone. We all welcome to Anamet Library Talk. At today's talk, we have distinguished speakers with us, Celso Castro and Amrabi Oliveira. Today's talk is entitled More Women and Subaltern Peoples Archives in a Traditional Archival Institution Towards a New Policy. The FGY CPDOC, a traditional Brazilian archival institution, has more than 200 personal archives less than 5% of which were of women in 2015, with almost no documentation of subaltern people, such as indigenous people. However, since 2015, the CPDOC has taken institutional initiatives that have resulted in greater diversity and inclusion in its documentary collection about gender, inequality, and inclusion of documents related to subaltern peoples. The presentation will explain how they changed the archival policy of the institution and its outcomes. At this point, I would like to introduce you our speakers. Celso Castro was born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1963. He has a PhD in so so social anthropology from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 1995. He is a professor and dean of the School of Social Sciences of the Getulo Vargas Foundation, FGY CPDOC. Amurabi Oliveira has a PhD in sociology from the Federal University of Pernambuco, Brazil, 2011. He is a professor of sociology at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, Brazil, and has extensive experience in, in the history of social science. Dear attendees, please be reminded that your video and audios are closed. Please type your questions in the chat section. Your questions will be answered in the Q&A session. Now, I am passing the word to the speaker. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you very much, Irene. And uh, I'd like to thank you know, for the invitation uh, to talk about this subject. Uh, it is a pleasure, real pleasure for me to talk about my, my institution and especially about some uh, recent developments we've been going through. So I have a, a data show here to 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 show you. Uh, I'm going to continue talking, but uh, let me see. How... Okay, first about uh, uh, CPDOC, CPDOC, CPDOC in, in Portuguese, I, as I will say now. It stands for Center for Research and Documentation of Contemporary History of Brazil. It's part of a, a foundation, Getúlio Vargas Foundation. And uh, the CEPEDOC is actually nowadays the School of Social Sciences. Uh, it, it was created in 1973. So this year we turned uh, our 50th anniversary. And CEPEDOC holds uh, uh, one of the more important archival uh, collections in, on, on contemporary Brazilian history. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, six uh, archives, personal archives from former presidents of, of Brazil. <clears throat> and uh, CEPEDOC, uh, as stated in our regiment, it was created uh, with the mission to, to housing sets of documents relevant to the country's uh, recent uh, history. Uh, recent history in Brazil, when it was created, it was mostly uh, considered uh, uh, the history after the revolution of 1930 uh, in Brazil. But now uh, we have uh, 230 uh, personal archives no? uh, of personalities in, in Brazilian politics, no preeminent politicians in Brazil uh, during the, the 20th century. Uh, and uh, uh, as I, I told you, have six uh, former presidents' archives, as well as ministers, uh, governors, uh, members of Congress, uh, and other political actors. FGV is not public; it's a private foundation, although not uh, a non-profit institution, uh, well known in, in Brazil. So uh, we have these uh, 230 personal archives donated to FGV, and we uh, organize and open to the public, uh, public and free access. Uh, besides the, 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 the personal archives, we also have a set of about uh, 2,500 interviews 
uh, oral history interview interviews uh, with almost 8,000 8, hours of recording uh, since the very beginning of CPDOC. Uh, we started the oral history program. It was uh, a pioneering, you know, uh, program in, in, in institutionalizing, institutionalizing you no know, this this method of oral history in in Brazil. Well, it, it's a collection uh, widely known and and consulted by researchers, you know, in the field of history, social sciences. Uh, it has a, a clear. Uh, Characteristic, no, it includes mainly uh, personal records and interviews with members of the Brazilian political elite uh, uh, because uh, they occupied you no know, different positions, important positions, uh, even though uh, ideologically and political, politically diverse. But uh, most of the collection focus on the more traditional uh, and conservative elites uh, since they were the ones that dominated you know, the political scene in Brazil, uh, in Brazilians' uh, recent history. But uh, what I'd like to emphasize here is that this is general profile, you know, mostly political elites in Brazil since the 1930s. Sepedox uh, uh, collection has a, a, a very uh, considerable inequality you know, in terms of gender. Uh, as I told, knowing the, the, the abstract about this presentation in 2015, we have only 10, 10 out, out of 208 at that time, personal uh, archives. So less than 5% uh, of our archives were from women. And uh, actually four of these 10 uh, were uh, archives attached to the archives of, of men. You no, know, of whom these women were wives or, or mothers. You no, know, the documentation of uh, four out of ten uh, women we had at that time were part of their you no know, husbands or or, or sons' uh, archives and their let's say our archival identity or archival individuality you know, was established by us at Sepedoc when we received the the archives. So. I can say that uh, no, as, as uh, a way to justify this gender inequality, that the explanation is very clear. No, for the, the small uh, number of women's archives, is that the, the, the reality of, of Brazilian history and society is like that. No, we have an extraterritorially patriarchal, androcentric society, and especially in these. Uh, political important positions, institutional politics, uh, mostly. Uh, however, uh, as I told you, in recent years, no, especially uh, since 2015, uh, we have taken uh, uh, institutional initiatives, no, that have uh, resulted in in a greater in a greater uh, uh, diversity, no, and inclusion in our collection about gender inequality, but also, as I was told a little bit later, uh, related to records that uh, come from uh, what we can call uh, subaltern peoples. I'm not discussing the, you know, the label, but uh, people uh, that are not uh, in higher positions, either in, in Brazilian politics or uh, society as well. But let me first talk about the archives uh, of uh, of women. No, as I told you, less than 5% in 2015 were from uh, uh, women. And uh, well, regarding CPDOC's, uh, uh, let's say, archival policy, né? this is the institutional policy that defines uh, the types, you no, know, the, the modalities of uh, reception in the case of uh, archives or production, you no, know, of, of interviews, in the case of oral history. Until uh, September 2015, uh, uh, there was no definition uh, expressed in, in our institutional documents. Uh, this does not mean that this policy did not uh, exist, but it was somehow let's say, naturally understood or taken for granted uh, over more than three decades you know, since our uh, beginning as an institution and the beginning of the formation of our collection. 
but there was uh, uh, on our website an explanation uh, about our policy for uh, archives that uh, mentioned two points. No, first that CPDOC houses uh, archives of uh, quoting public men of outstanding performance on the national scene, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and second, that in general, CPDOC uh, uh, had funds, archival funds of quoting men who worked in the formulation or execution of national policies for various sectors of the federal public administration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so in, in the, the two, uh, uh, let's say two points mentioned, we're talking about men. Uh, as I told you, it was taken for granted, you no know, using uh, men because uh, most of our political history was you no know, driven and the higher positions occupied by men. But uh, in September 2015, that was uh, discussed. You know, we had a meeting. I remember very well. I was already director of uh, the institution at that time. But uh, the team involved you know, in the archival work at the institution. And uh, uh, we formalized the new uh, document, which is available on our uh, website now. Uh, a session of, of this document uh, defines you know, the, import, the, the, the importance you know, of, of archives, but uh, we made uh, some very important changes. The first one is very simple. We rewrite you know, the gender uh, uh, indicator. Uh, so it's uh, now it's personal archives of men and women Know, with outstanding performance, etc. So it was the first time that a gender indicator appeared uh, uh, that registered no men and women in our official documents. As I told you, it's just a uh, you know, it can be seen as just a matter of introducing uh, a word, but as uh, I would explain, it was much more than that. You no, know, I think that it opened uh, a new a uh, period of more sensibility uh, uh, towards you no know, uh, bringing more uh, women's archives for uh, CPDOC. In 2016, uh, we received, and that's uh, important, you no, know, the, the archive of a woman, uh, an anthropologist, Brazilian uh, well-known anthropologist, uh, Yvonne Magui. And since then, since you no know, 2016. Uh, we have received uh, other 27 personal archives, and uh, one third of these uh, archives are from women, no? 33% of these new uh, donations compared to less than 5% until 2015. So that makes uh, a difference. Uh, now, uh, we hope that uh, we'll keep in receiving you no know, proportionally more archives from uh, women. Uh, it's important to underline that uh, is, is not this is not something that happened by chance. Uh, but uh, we made you no know, this uh, subtle but significant change you know, in the in our document about our archival uh, policy. But uh, the important point here is that we had. Uh, at that time and still uh, have a greater sensitivity for, uh, let's say, an active search for women's archives and uh, no, a new, let's say, a collection uh, line. Uh, and uh, well, ah, here I told you about that, you no, know, increased very clearly, you no, know, the, the proportion of archives from uh, women since uh, 2015 or, or 16 uh, in greater sensitivity. Sensitivity is a word I'm, I'm using you know, as a token for a different uh, set of, of positions and feelings in the keep in the team about you know, this necessity. Uh, uh, we received, for instance, the archive of Carlota Pereira de Queiroz, the first elected congresswoman in, in, in Brazil, <clears throat> and uh, the, the, the personal 
<clears throat> records of Maria Isaura Pereira de Queiroz, one of the most important no female social scientists in Brazil, uh, just to give uh, two examples. But in addition, in addition to, to, to searching for you know, the women, uh, women's uh, files, uh, we took other <clears throat> initiatives uh, about you no know, to about the small presence of women's archives in our institution. Uh, between 2019 and 21, we receive, received a fund from the uh, CRA, or the Center for Research Libraries, and uh, we digitalize, digitize, and, and then make nine uh, files of women online that can be consulted uh, through the internet. Uh, it's about 35,000 uh, scan and no document pages that were released for public uh, consultation uh, besides 1,000 photographs, etc. We also produce produced several small documentary films from these archives, you no know, using material from these archives, you no know, to publicize and to make uh, to, to, to to make room for more uh, awareness in the public about uh, the importance and the relevance of these women's archives in our uh, institution. We have a, a center for audiovisual and documentary uh, production you no know, at our institution. It was created. 2006, and we also had several seminars or other, let's say, academic events about uh, this, this subject, open to general public. Now you can see here uh, it's in Portuguese, but uh, we have uh, no pieces of uh, made for social media uh, seminars on archives of women and uh, audiovisual memory, uh, seminar on archives of women memory and uh, representativeness, um, women writers, no archives, uh, literary archives and feminisms in Latin America, uh, women and their archival, uh, private archivals, uh, no, the, the review from the donators, just to give a few uh, examples. We also had uh, people from our uh, staff presenting no, at seminars uh, or other academic events on this subject. We also located some uh, grants or, or, or scholarships for students, undergraduate or graduate students to develop this uh, subject, no, about the presence of women in, in archives. And last but not least, we created along with uh, uh, the University of Sao Paulo, University of São Paulo, which is one of the most important universities in Brazil, has an Institute of Brazilian Studies, no IEB, and uh, CEPEDOC and IEB created uh, a few years ago uh, Rede de Arquivos de Mulheres, a Women's Archives Network. You no, know? after the creation, we're joined by the National Archives of Brazil. They asked to join the, 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 the network and also the Moreira Salles Institute, which is a very important uh, cultural institution in Brazil. So now we are more, uh, no, let's say, stronger and bigger than uh, when this uh, network no, of women's archives were created. They will promote, uh, you know, uh, events, seminars, and discussions about uh, this uh, subject. Well, uh, but let me also talk about the oral history program, which is a source of documentation for our institutions. As I told you, we have more than 2,500 2, interviews and about uh, 8,000 hours. But uh, I'd like to emphasize that an oral history interview, or as well as a personal uh, archive, uh, should not be seen as something <clears throat> that is given given in sense that it's finished, it's deposited there in a safekeeping institution. Let's say it remains there, waiting for the researchers, you now waiting for the users. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure, and I this experience I'm going to talk about is that more than 
let's say this fixed uh, uh, finished no points uh, documents from archives or or history interviews uh, can be linked some somehow no in uh, unexpected and uh, very complex uh, chains of uh, events and social interactions i give an example about about that uh, for instance the uh, the 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 archives of of uh, Yvonne Magui. But uh, the oral history program, just a, a brief note. Uh, we began, of course, in the 70s, interviewing people from the political elites. Uh, aqui, in the top of, of this, this, this uh, page, you can see two black and white interviews with one uh, on the left, with uh, Amaral Peixoto, a very important politician in Brazil, on the right, with the former president Ernesto Geisel. In the middle, uh, that's me, <laughs> very young at that time, interviewing Geisel. But you can see two other pictures uh, in, in color with two social scientists in Brazil, uh, Lucia Lippe. Uh, well, let me talk about these uh, uh, interviews. Uh, they were uh, recorded no, uh, for a project, Memory of Social Sciences in Brazil. A project uh, was uh, it was initiated in 2008, so it's uh, 15 years old, but it keep, keep, keeps going. You know, it's an open project. Uh, we have uh, about 300 hours of interviews, and we have interviewed about 120 social scientists. You no, know, I'm the coordinator of this project since the the, the beginning, and. Uh, one important aspect of this program and unexpected uh, and unintentional, no, let's say, out uh, uh, result of this project is that some of the interviews or their families uh, donated to the, the records, no, the personal files, archives for us. Uh, I have a list of 11 no, since the beginning of this, uh, this project on memory of social sciences. As I told you, it's not something that we were uh, asking for at the beginning, but it happened that though these people were interviewing, most senior social scientists in Brazil had personal archives and uh, donated uh, to us. Uh, the archive of Yvonne Magui is very interesting because uh, her archive uh, included a very important collection uh, of documents about Afro-Brazilian religions, you know, the subjects of her research for uh, her master's and, and PhD. And some of these documents uh, register uh, elements not present in other archival collections, you know, especially since because these uh, religions were victims you know, of prejudice or, or even open uh, uh, persecution in Brazil from the police or other uh, or other religious groups as well. Uh, the records are now organized, open to the public. We also produced uh, uh, a small uh, documentary, short documentary film directed at, by two of our students. No, we we always try to make our students involved in these projects and uh, we're preparing a, a second one here. Uh, in the middle, you can see Yvonne Magui, Magui no, very young, during her field work and some pictures, some photographs from her uh, archive. And uh, we produce, uh, this is a, a short film, but it has shown more than 20, I guess, different events, academic or, or, or film documentary uh, events uh, in Brazil and elsewhere, also abroad. It's a very beautiful, small, uh, small documentary film. Here is the, the, the link, uh, if you can, can, can see it, you know, magic and power. Uh, well, but I want to talk about a very recent you know, sequence of actions you know, that in an unexpected ways you know, led to, to a chain 
of uh, interrelated uh, events of uh, great uh, great relevance for our institution, CPDOC, and that involved uh, research, documentation, and also uh, educational teaching activities. You know, CPDOC is important to say uh, the very name of the institution, Center for Research and Documentation, you know, as it was created, so research and documentations, uh, uh, to you know things that are present in our DNA of the institution. Uh, but uh, 30 years later, after after the creation of CPDOC in 2003, or 20 years ago, we also created uh, the courses, undergraduate and graduate courses. So we add you know, the teaching activities to these traditional uh, research and documentary activities. But uh, on October and November of 2021, less than two years uh, ago, uh, uh, we had two interviews with Roberto da Mata. Roberto da Mata is a very important Brazilian anthropologist. Uh, now he's 87 years old. Uh, I made these interviews you no, know, in the scope of the project I already mentioned, Memory of Social Sciences in Brazil. It's about you no know, the projects about the the, the 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 life history and the trajectory of of social sciences important in, in Brazil, and uh, once uh, processed, you no know, the interviews are made uh, available you no know, to the general public uh, on the internet. Uh, well, in the case of interview with Damata, based on the interview. Uh, he mentioned the possibility of donating his archive uh, to CPDOC. No, he was 85 years old when we interviewed, and he had a, a library full of you no know, documents and photographs and uh, and other material relevant for us that he had uh, accumulated you know, in his academic uh, career. And uh, he was already familiar with uh, Sepedoc's work, you no, know, a friend of Ivone Magui or, or other people who had donated uh, their archives, and we encouraged him to 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 donate at the end. Uh, the donation was made, you no, know, in February 2022. So a few months after the interview, as I told you, you no, know, <clears throat> we didn't expect it to receive know uh, his collections after uh, the interview but it, it it is something that is happening that happens with Damata but it, that is happening much more often than we anticipated <clears throat> and uh, the first uh, let's say shipment enough of, of, of documents arrived 20 21 boxes like no, these ones in the in the photo, I guess. And later on, we received the new shipments, smaller, <clears throat> but included uh, in, in this collection. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, there were many, many uh, uh, photographs, mostly taken by uh, Damata when he was doing uh, ethnographic research. Uh, among the Apinagé people, no, Apinagé indigenous people in Brazil between uh, 1962 and 1970. No, uh, during this period, he he had uh, four no, periods of fieldwork, uh, not very extensive, the total of about eight months on the field, but it was the research for his uh, doctoral thesis, uh, doctor dissertation, that was defended at Harvard University in 1970. Uh, uh, and later he he published a book. It was published in, in book as uh, a Divided World, the Social Structure of the Apinagé Indians uh, in Portuguese. Uh, it was published in 1976. Uh, well, the photos about the Apinagé a part of his uh, collection, but uh, very important pictures. Uh, they record uh, um, people, places, uh, rituals no, of the Apinagé. Uh, 
at the beginning we 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 estimated about 1000 pictures but now since the uh, time uh, passed we identified much more uh, it's about 3000 3000 photographs about the pinage uh, and the pinage is a very poor uh, uh, indigenous group in Brazil uh, they don't have archives they don't have libraries they don't have documentation centers they don't have most of them pictures of themselves and their parents grandparents and uh, you know for other other periods of their their life or the 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 the, the life of the villages etc so it is a very important part of their history and memory that is that we reserved received you know donated as part of uh, Roberto da Mata's uh, archive uh, also uh, uh, K7 uh, no tapes and at least one uh, separate film made at the time by 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 da Mata and uh, very difficult you know the thing for us when uh, I remember when I first saw uh, these pictures uh, how we're going to 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 organize you know the this uh, this uh, audiovisual material on the Apinagé and how could we identify these people the Mata had no record of their names but uh, they had names either indigenous or or sometimes uh, Portuguese Brazilian names as well uh, but uh, it was uh, research carried 60 to, to 50 years before, and we are you now doomed, let's say, to give a very generic identification. No, Pinaje Indians and uh, and that Pinaje rituals, Pinaje people, Pinaje. Uh, so uh, ignoring you no know, their. Uh, their identification, personal identification. But to avoid that, I took you know, the, the, the initiative to request the collaboration of the Apinagé to identify the photos. So I searched for the Apinagé on the Google. I I find uh, a, 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 prof, a teacher at an indigenous school, Apinagé. The Apinagé is a group of about 3,000 people in the... You know, the center of Brazil, Tocantins state, uh, very far uh, place. And uh, they're poor people. They don't have too many resources, but they are very, fa fairly well, uh, let's say, organized and, and uh, preserved their traditions until uh, today. But uh, I found uh, uh, the email of a professor at uh, the the indigenous school at uh, one of the villages, no, Julio, Julius, uh, the Brazilian name it is Game, it is the name uh, in Apinagé, in, in one of the villages. And I, I contacted him. I wrote an email, then uh, re answered, and we, we discussed on the internet, uh, on Zoom actually, you know, how could we establish the uh, uh, collaboration for identifying uh, these photos? Uh, and other materials, you no, know, like the recordings uh, related to the Pinaget. We had a long conversation. He was very, very much interested in this proposal, and uh, he asked for another meeting and to invite uh, other uh, uh, Pinaget, other people, and uh, so we had several meetings uh, on the internet. This is one virtual meeting I had. You no, know, I'm here, and as you can see, uh, here is Julio you No know, Gambe, and uh, we, we can also uh, see uh, the Kizada Doko, which is you no know, the chief of this uh, village. Well, uh, let's say that uh, the knowledge you no know, of of uh, about the this, the material we received, as well as the idea of uh, establishing a collaborative work it was from the very beginning very enthusiastically uh, welcomed by the, the Apinagé. 
No, we had uh, several conversations, meeting. I showed them some pictures and you no, know, and, and the, the film, and they you no know, saw that as an exceptional opportunity to have a, a history of their uh, own people uh, told you no know, by the the the, the, the Apinages images, and uh, they were very you no know, glad to see what they. I think it's a recognition and appreciation of, of their uh, culture. Uh, well, since the beginning as well, uh, we we kept them fully informed uh, and uh, asked for uh, you know, their consent to any uh, uh, step we took about uh, this uh, collection uh, and also formalized to this collaboration, you no know, sent messages, uh, uh, exchanged messages with the president of their association you know, of, of villages, etc. But it was a very uh, evident, you no, know, since the very first contact we had with the Pinage, that more than a simple, let's say, identification of individuals in, in the photos. Uh, uh, the work would uh, encompass you know, the explanation of a full, of a rich social and cultural context. You no, know, since if the first identification, uh, not only the identification of an individual, but a, a history, a context about this individual. You no, know, he was son of the, uh, he, you no, know, he lived through that, etc., and he died this way. So it was a completely. Uh, uh, context that came along with the, the identification. Uh, uh, this uh, the chief of the, 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 the this village, you know, Zé, name uh, Brazilian name Zé da Doc. He's seventy six uh, years old, and he recognized most of the the people uh, in this uh, photo. You no, know, it's shown now, uh, and uh, he was contextualizing information about you know, the person or the place or the event you no know, it was uh, happening uh, and, and they were very very interested uh, not interested they're very moved you no know, uh, emotionally by the identification of of their you no know, relatives you no know, uh, brothers uh, parents grandparents uh, because as i told you they they have almost none a picture of 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 them so uh we we had here clearly uh, another way of organizing and identifying identifi identifi identifying sorry uh, uh, our photos for instance at sepedoc uh, we have a list of different uh, elements for identifying a photograph for instance location if it is black and white or color date the name of the photographer etc cetera, etc cetera. that's one classification no way of doing that for several decades but uh, how would roberto da mata organize his material what is important for him when he sees you no know, the, the the he see this the, 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 this this collection of 2000 pictures he would divide it by let's say field trip uh, season or or the village it was taken or the evented you no know, pro portrayed in, in this picture and a third you no know, way of seeing these pictures and watching to so then how would the apinage people see this material no, how they would organize what is relevant for us. So we are re really dealing with uh, with three possible, let's say, classification schemes. Now, uh, that of the archival institution, CEPEDOC, our traditional way of doing that. Uh, the anthropologists who created you know, the documents, took the pictures or recorded. And the Apinage who can see now uh, a very rich collection from 50, 60 years uh, ago. So we conducted uh, additional interviews with Damata only to ask him 
how would he organize his photo, his photos uh, and the other materials? No, in August and November uh, uh, last year. Uh, in, in the case of the the Apinage, it would be uh, more difficult. It's not only one individual, as in case of of the the, the creator of the these pictures, but several different peoples with different experiences, ages, and uh, you know, experience about uh, the photos and the events and people shown on this uh, uh, material. But uh, uh, it's important, uh, let me, me see where, uh, to say that uh, we, we we you formalized it, as I told you about the first context, informal context uh, with the Pinage. We formalized uh, a, a document, you know, a collaborative uh, uh, work, and uh, we were able to to have the approval, some funding from the FGV itself. And this year, in January, uh, uh, we we began, you no. Know, with their collaboration to to identify this material and to organize you know, this let's say historical uh, cultural heritage uh, for the the, the Apinage and to think about something that would be uh, important for them like creating a virtual museum or a center for documentation something like that it's not clear yet but also as a way of uh, for our institution to 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 establish a way a methodology let's say for treating you no know, uh, documentation uh, of indigenous people and our minorities and the subaltern people uh, in Brazil uh, no uh, I have no time to discuss uh, in detail this uh, collaborative uh, work but uh, I'd like to give a, an example. Uh, of the the you no know, the, the 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 film he took it's a 15 minutes film a very short but that have recorded some ritual or something that uh, it's not present in their life nowadays some rituals that are not performed for a while and they're you no know, very interested in, in, in regained the knowledge about the ritual and some uh, some myths that were recorded as well and other other elements present in 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 the Mata's uh, uh, archive, and since we're establishing all you know, this collaboration uh, about their let's say herit heritage, uh, uh, we had another idea. We had the idea of uh, uh, enrolling some apinages in our master's degree. Uh, course, you know, we have a professional master's degree in in cultural goods, the bench culturais, which is exactly what we are doing, and uh, it's very well evaluated in, in Brazil. It's a reference in, the, in its area, and the proposal was very, very well accepted by the Pinage, and we carried the uh, uh, selection progress for them, and. Uh, in December last year, we approved the two, two, two apinage uh, to join you know, our program as master's uh, student. Uh, one man and one uh, woman. Uh, the women's is professor, is, sorry, is teacher at uh, the, the, the one of the schools in the villages. And the other is, is the president of the association of you no, know, the chiefs of the the the, the apinage. So, I'm talking about an interview that resulted in donation of an archive, that resulted in a collaborative work, and that resulted in the entrance of our two first indigenous uh, uh, students at our uh, master's program. You no, know, uh, so research, documentation, and teaching activities, and everything that happened as I told you, in an ex unexpected and, and not anticipated uh, uh, way. Uh, 
these master's programs is is offered mostly online you have only two two weeks to mandatory courses that uh, are given uh, concentrated in two weeks one in the first semester of the year in march and the other in in, in september so we had to to pay you know their ticket our tickets to come and uh, you know stay in rio but it was very important because uh, they could uh, work more closely no, and and see and firsthand the the, the the documents of of the archives, and uh, here are the two students. No, uh, uh, their Brazilian names uh, uh, and indigenous name was Andressa and Emilio, uh, but in Apinagés, Irembeti and Nindo, they gave you no know, uh, talks about. Uh, the Apinaget people, their colleagues of the masters, very interesting. They socialized very well. And uh, we promoted you know, the meeting of Damata with them. It was the first time Damata met Apinaget and vice versa since uh, 1978, when he paid a visit, short visit to the Apinaget. So after five, uh, 45 years, uh, they met. And uh, Andressa, no, Irembet, after hours of they're very happy because Damata became a, some kind of mythological no person for them because they always heard about you no know, the anthropologists and their book. It's the only book available on the the, the Apinaget, etc. They they met, it was very emotional a meeting, several hours, you no know, watching the the the, the the, the films. It was important. Uh, uh, Irembeti for the first time saw a moving image of her grandmother the, who had died and uh, she had no picture at all. Uh, she was very emotional at that time. And after hours, she asked the Damata one question. Uh, Why have you never returned? No. And he was <laughs> completely no shocked. He said, he said, Oh, that's the question of my life. And uh, I, I told him, well, let's fix it. Let's go back to the to the village. Let's took no, let's take uh, Damata uh, again uh, uh, to the to the the Apinage. Uh, this meeting was in uh, March April this year, and uh, ah, sorry, this is important. After the, the receiving of, of Damatas, uh, we were searching for the, the records of a former anthropologist, Courtney Mandaju, who had visited them for a few months in the 30s, no, 30 years before Damata. Uh, we had only published a few pictures of Nimandaju, but we found 90. Uh, his 94, uh, the, the whole collection he took uh, in, a, in a center, technological center, a museum in Dresden, Germany. And uh, we asked the copy and they, they sent us. So the collection is no getting bigger. It's another, has another archival identity, but the material about the Apinage now is, is, is growing. Uh, and besides having them as students, we also had the idea of asking them to offer a course on the Apinaget Society and Culture and Languages. So now in the second semester, it started in, in August, right, one month, one month ago, two Apinaget uh, uh, you know, are giving uh, our first course no given by indigenous people at FGV at Sepedoc. Uh, Irembeti, who is our students at Masters, and Ugame, who is not our student, he, he already has a Masters from the Federal University of Goiânia, uh, and was the first you no know, person I contacted uh, in the Apinagé. And uh, this is a you no know, a screenshot of the course, as you can see, both here with other uh, students taking this course. This three classes, I guess, uh, I guess until now. And 
we brought <laughs> this month uh, three weeks ago on August the 20th uh, we took the matter back to the Apinage. Uh, I'm not going to talk much more about that. It was a very, very emotional, very important meeting for the matter for the Apinage. We're producing no small films about that experience. And for the Apinage, it was a very important moment as well. No, he, they were concentrating people from several different uh, villages to receive him uh, and uh, we stayed there for a few days uh, it was very very moving experience uh, as a surprise I was nominated the Pinage I was adopted by then as well I, now I have uh, 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 an indigenous name and family Penhoric uh, uh, that's the moment I was baptized as a Pinage. But it's interesting that no, uh, we projected a film of of uh, Damata in villages, and it was very interesting for them to see. I, perhaps it's the only moving image of the Pinage at, at that time. So uh, we had to repeat it four times, I guess, because they were very much excited. There's no uh, lots of emotion uh, and uh, about that. E well, uh, let me oh, we also recorded the whole uh, experience. So we have now more more records about you no know, the, these records and their. Uh, reception by 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 the people and things are and I keep 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 going and uh, it's uh, no uh, developing a process uh, having ideas about what to do with the material you no know, along and together in collaboration uh, uh, with the 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 Epinage. Uh, they're recognizing people you no know, they're uh, deceased uh, husbands in case of these old women and uh, their parents uh, these pictures is, for me is wonderful they recognize themselves uh, you no, know, as very young people and they don't have pictures of themselves except the pictures that are present in in, in the archive you no know, we made digital copies uh as a physical copies of the digitalized the uh, pictures to send uh, to them but uh, to conclude uh, I'm in the time to conclude uh, I'd like to quote you no know, a Canadian archivist Terry Cook uh, to say uh, he, he was at Sepedoc once I met him that were experiencing you know a type of uh, paradigmatic shift uh, and uh, Cook said that for archivists uh, the paradigm uh, shift requires moving away from identifying themselves as passive guardians of an inherited legacy to celebrating their their whole role, you know, in, in actively shaping collective or social uh, memory. In this sense, our approach to the collection has shifted from a more passive to a more active position one of archival curation you no know, that uh, has in mind uh, more clearly the archival process as a dynamic process not only receiving passively passively uh, but you no know, searching for archives of women and along with these archives uh, uh, of social scientists we're receiving you no know, a great deal of what i call uh, brazilian society special subaltern people because uh, it was the subject of the researchers during their their life as as academics uh, and uh, researchers you no know, so this our collection you no know, in in this view is last the, the result of receiving uh, files that have uh, fulfilled their function you no know, in the lives of the individuals and more uh, the result of the search for uh, construction the construction of a more balanced, balanced social memory, you know, in terms of of gender and representativeness, and more than a guardian institution uh, of a collection, we are 
you know, seeing ourselves are, are as, as acting, you no, know, in producing uh, uh, this collection. So this movement uh, clarifies more uh, institutional responsibility in our collections, not only formation, but conformation as well. And with that, I, I stop uh, the presentation and, and, and conclude and go back to, to the video. Uh, yes, I talked for 50 minutes. I think it's the right time, no, Irene? Hi. Uh, so, just to begin, I will ask some questions for Celso. But first of all, I want to say thank you very much for Irene and Celso for the invitation, for the opportunity to debate these these lectures, because uh, these archives are very relevant for on the Brazilian uh, the Brazilian society, not only for the social scientists community because they have a huge relevance to understand our society. Well, um, the lecture gives me a lot of ideas and a lot of questions, and I want to begin with uh, some of them. Uh, the first question, I was thinking about the challenge to make <clears throat> this collection public because, of course, there's a lot of things that sometimes the owners of the collections don't want to show to the public and other things that they want to hide, they want to choose. How, how do you manage with it? How do you manage with the choice of the owners of the collections to make everything public? How to negotiate it? It's one of the first question. And the second one, for sure, the gender issue, it's a huge thing, not only in Brazil, but in general, in, in the academic life. Um, but in Brazil, there is another another thing that's very relevant, how when you try to think on the archive, the memory, and how we build our uh, academic community, the, 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 ra the, the question of race. So how to think, uh, how can we think about, how can we uh, uh, think about the whole of the black social scientists or more specifically, the black women in these archives? Because of course, the women are the minority in these all, the whole archives. It's something around 4.8%, less than 5%. Uh, but the black women, how, where are they? Uh, this is one question. And I don't want to make a, a lot of questions because <laughs> could make like, uh, this is not a examining committee. Uh, but just to select a few of them. And the another thing that I, I, I was thinking related to the women archives is especially the project uh, connected to the memory of social science in Brazil, and uh, I have the opportunity to listen to you in another in another conference and to talk a little bit about that. How the question of the maternity appears in these women careers trajectory, because of course nowadays with the parents in science and everything, it's a huge question how the maternity shapes their trajectories, how it appears in the memory, in their academic careers, etc. Mm -hmm. And one last question that I, I, I was thinking when you, you, you conduct your, your presentation, how to manage the collective work? I mean, normally when we are anthropologists, it's a very lonely work normally. It's like uh, the idea, uh, I think that since Malinovsky, at least everybody thinks always of the work of social scientists in general. Uh, it's a very lonely work. And you are talking about a collective work, mm -hmm. how to manage, how to train the students to go with you with the feed work, to conduct interviews, because uh, at least uh, I, I could say 
our training, our academic training, it's our to think as you need, need to go alone, you need to be alone with uh, uh, with your native, with uh, your, the subject of your research. And now you are showing a different way to conduct a, social, a, a research in the social science. It's something very interesting. How can we change that for uh, from the model that really uh, you need to stay alone, etc., from another to another mo model that you need to have a team. You need to train the students first. You need to manage it. And but just one last question. I promise. Uh, when you when you show the archive of Ivone Magui, and after that you show. Uh, uh, that relation with Robert Damata and the Pinaje, I was thinking that if it's not possible to conduct something similar with Yvonne Magui and the people that she she conducted her research in the 80s, 70s uh, with the Afro Brazilian religions, because um, I remember that I was, that I, I was listening to a lecture for her, uh, I think in, in some box or something like that. And she said that uh, the more relevant feedwork that she conducted was exactly uh, for her master thesis was like her ear. She said, "No, my PhD was great, but more, more, my more relevant feedwork was during my master." Yes. And I was thinking, if you, it's not something also possible to make to, this meeting between Yvonne Magui and the natives, etc. So just to begin, I have another question, but not to ask a lot of things for the okay. ones. All right, shall I answer now or wait for some questions? Irene, what do you think? Well, I, I can I can answer uh, Murabis from the last one. Uh, we did that with Yvonne Magui already. Uh, before we did with uh, Roberta Mata. Uh, we took her to visit you know, the people who were uh, participants, you know, still alive, of course, of their uh, experience, you know, their, their temples, you know, terreiros, as we say in Portuguese. But it was very different from the experience of the Mata because they were dispersed individuals in different places, not anymore the terreiro, no, this, uh, this temple didn't exist anymore. And uh, to give an example, the, the main uh, the chief, or like say, the, the, the priest of this uh, terreiro turned into an evangelic nowadays, uh, he doesn't like to talk about <laughs> his past as a, a adapted of a religion of the devil, as he says now. And other participants as well have turned into Pentecostals or other you know, denominations. And they're dispersed. It's not a community anymore. But we are now preparing a documentary film about this encounter, which is not that, let's say, uh, happy and emotional. It was really an experience of a lifetime staying with uh, the Apinage on the return of, of the matter, which, as I told you, became became a like a a sacred person, a cosmological you no know, uh, character. So, in the case of the Apinage, there was a community very well structured and a collective you no know, reception. In the case of uh, Ivani Magui, was different. Uh, how to manage you know, the, the collective work? It's a very good question. I think it's related more to the characteristic of our institution because uh, it, it has academic degrees, you no, know, either undergraduate or graduate degrees, etc. But it's not a university, it's inside a foundation. Uh, so we're not constrained by, by the typical division of labor at uh, universities. We don't have, for instance, departments. We don't have a department of history, department of sociology, or department of anthropology. No, uh, it's all together. And at the same time, as I try to emphasize, we're at the same time institution with documentation, research, and teaching. And some people are involved in the, in the three. 
activities, three types of activities. I worked for 11 years organizing archives. And now I'm doing, you know, producing uh, with this project of memory of, of social sciences uh, in Brazil, uh, new sources, new archives as well, and have to deal, even though it's not my subject of academic research. You no, know, it's something that I'm producing as a documentary person, let's say. I think that uh, somehow we managed to to pass these characteristics to our teaching and to involve the students in this process. And uh, our students have you known this, this fabulous you know, set of archives and interviews to, to do their their no their thesis, their dissertations, their no their their work. And uh, I think it's most uh, related to the characteristics of the institution than to let's say the the individual uh, no drive uh, but uh, and the students are very much interested in having access directly to no their it's in, in their house no it's not an institution that they visit to search for records etc it's then we have also lots of uh, scholarships to train them, and then that's a very you know, institutional, let's say, uh, response to this uh, challenge of uh, bringing these things together, you no know, research documentation and and teaching. And as well, it's a very interdisciplinary institution. As I told you, in this project of Depinage, we have anthropologists, historians, sociologists, uh, people from archives, from communication, etc. Everything, you no, know, makes it together, and uh, that makes the work much more interested, interesting than uh, alone. And uh, I, I think that uh, not only the tradition of anthropology, sociology, emphasizes the, the individual experience in the field, uh, but also the academic work also emphasize you know the production individual production much more than cooperative uh, work uh, even though several anthropologists and sociologists were not alone they were to the field work with their wives sometimes no it's a different uh, uh, question that we're facing together uh, nowadays no the the red, red discovering of these links to families etc uh I want more rabbits up here, but uh, I think yeah, it's, it's going back. Well, yeah. let's talk about uh, race is another indicator uh, in the case of Brazilian uh, society and the history is much more uh, difficult. It's easier to find archives of women that were uh, important in politics than uh, black women. Uh, because of you no know, the, the second, let's say, the intersectionality of the black women in Brazilian history, uh, we have uh, uh, we have some archives, some black politicians, women black politicians as well, but uh, uh, most uh, white women, you no, know, we, we received, but we're now receiving, you no, know, uh, as I, I told you in the archive of. Of, of Yvonne Magui about Afro religion in, in Brazil, we have you no know, most of people are black or or mixed or if it's something uh, like that. But uh, it's also something we're trying to 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 improve. Let's say to uh, I can't tell you the names now, but at least three archives of black females are now trying to receive. Uh, for several reasons, we don't uh, publicize the names before they are donated to FGV, but they're very one of of these archives is, is very impressive and will make uh, a new paradigm uh, shift in our collection. Uh, if you re we received, but there are some, including some legal questions involved with that in that process. Uh, but uh, about the first question, well, uh, the challenges uh, to make this uh, this collection uh, public and uh, how the owners you know, we deal 
or we negotiate, no, as you you said, to to receive these uh, archives and make them public. Uh, we don't do that. That's simple as that. If you want to donate it, you're going to sign. It's our property. If you have any questions, I I no, I request. I'd like to be consulted. If you know, keep it with yourself and when you feel completely no well to donate donate it without any conditions and it will be made public so that's uh, the point we don't negotiate uh, of course sometimes people can keep some very private or intimate material and don't donate but uh, we don't negotiate that no uh, for at least 15 20 years so everything if you want to donate it just sign here and it's our property and thank you very much and we're going to organize and made it available publicly that's the the way to deal with it. otherwise it would be in the middle of you no know, very complex and difficult uh, things but most of people donated uh, or their families you no know, several times but um well, I think I covered most of your uh, question as a specialist to know on this object. And what I was a researcher on this, this very, you no, know, uh, these archives and uh, collections of interviews and the history of social sciences is a very keen, you no, know, uh, researcher as well of, on this subject. Uh, well, in the chat, there is no question because I think that our audience is a little bit shine. Uh, uh, I, I can't speak Turkish, unfortunately, otherwise it would be more. <laughs> yeah, but um, if there are no questions, but I, I, I want to ask another one because, as you say, I know uh, very well this archive, especially the member of social science. And one thing that is very interesting, maybe uh our audience don't know that i thought it's a archive of the memory of social scientists that works in brazil they work in brazil but they are not all of them are brazilian yeah. many of them they are foreigners that moved to brazil in some point of their careers and they are living brazil for so long uh from united states from france from italy uh from argentina uh, I, I just want to ask if, if there is something um, uh, quite different uh, in terms of trajectory of these foreign scholars that move to Brazil because they have a different relationship with the how they begin to research in Brazil. Some of them move from different political uh, contacts. For example, uh, some colleagues that came from Argentina to Brazil, uh -huh. out of them, uh, they became Brazilianists or Latin Americanists in their countries and then moved to Brazil and specialized in Brazil. All of them married with some Brazilian. And okay. <laughs> it, it, it can talk a little bit about that because I think that it's, it's a little bit curious for a foreign audience to know that this project includes some of the uh, foreign researchers, foreign scholars that moved to Brazil. Yes. Yes, we we, we included in the project, as you, you said, people who moved to Brazil. No. Uh, but about their uh, archives, no? we also have archives of people who have lived in Brazil, studied in Brazil, but went abroad to their you no know, homelands and uh, and died or uh, is it possible to receive you know, these materials? Uh, I can tell you that uh, yes, uh, actually at the present moment we have two archives uh, in view, but in this case there are some legal questions involved. For instance, one of them gave it to the Smithsonian, but didn't give, just deposit there. We don't know the status, if it was donated formally to the Smithsonian or not. And I was just talking to the person who wants to, to donate it to Sepedoc, 
about this this question and she was not uh, sure about that she was going to investigate if there is some formal uh, I think that in this case it would be very difficult for this mission to to send the archive uh, you know, to us uh, of course then can uh, give a copy or, uh, as, the, as the, the, the Museum of Ethnology in Dresden sent us 94 photographs of, of uh, Nima Daju. In this case, he donated to, to the museum, but in the case of Smithsonian, and there is another one we're still dealing uh, with. But uh, yes, it's possible uh, in both cases, no, either interview them for the project memory of social sciences or, or receiving their archives. But uh, the, 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 the interesting point here, I think, and I try to emphasize that is that the things are or can be related and the archive is not something fixed that it's there. No, waiting for someone to use it. No, the, the very the institution can use it. Institution, not only the, the archival department, let's say, but the university, the students, and turn this material into a living thing. No, that can uh, our our uh, experience shows that involve uh, lots of you no know, a lot of different unexpected activities, uh, but very important. These experiences are very important for ourselves, for our institution, and for ourselves as uh, as, as persons, you no know, as 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 researchers or people involved in this archival work as well know the sense that we can make uh, different interesting things uh, with this uh, material and not only guarding it you know, but establishing bridges with students researchers and the people you know, represented in the case of these uh, archives from women or, or subaltern people as I, I, I'm saying I think that is the 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 most important feature of this experience so far. Well, I don't know if Ari wanted to ask some question or some of the end of our audience. Uh, we have one hour and 20 minutes is about no, the time Irene gave us. No? I couldn't get that to say. Sorry? Oh. I couldn't hear. Yeah, I couldn't hear either. Ah. Did you say? Well, do we it, have no, it's about the time. time yeah, one we hour can, and, we and have, a half. Uh, we have ten more, ten more minutes. If you have more questions. Oh, I I don't have questions. <laughs> if nobody has questions, I think there aren't questions okay. in chat section. It means that. Okay, so we, can, we need to finish, can finish right now. now. Yes. Uh, well. Thank you so much for this wonderful talk. It was very nice to hear about the uh, archive in Brazil and this women archives. So mm -hmm. I need to tell you that I'm trying to write my thesis about women archives. Ah. So I'm not. Oh, nice. uh, I'm. Not, I haven't finished that, but I'm just in the beginning, so it, it was so helpful for me. Um, so um, uh, I would like to say that our Anomet Library talks will continue in October. Mm -hmm. uh, we will share the details on following day. So thank you again and have a good day. Thank you very much for the invitation again. Thank you, Amurabi, for the comments and uh, hope to see you again in the near future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bye -bye. So, so Thank you. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.